We are hearing a lot coming out of China right now. We had numbers this week which were not very encouraging, perhaps some deflation going on. Certainly their trade is down. What is your sense of what's happening? What are the important things we should be looking at in China right now? Well, so nice to see you again, David. And definitely Xi Jinping has a lot on his plate. Uh, the world has really been very focused, I think, on how to deal with a strong China. And now we haven't really thought through some of the implications of a weak China. When we look at what is happening in the real estate market, there are still major challenges ahead. And this is critically important because it's one of the main sources of investment for most Chinese. And so if the market is not doing well there, it has a significant impact on growth and investment opportunities. Two, local debt. This is something that policymakers have been tracking for a long time and COVID just made it worse. A lot of this debt, and this is what's really concerning, is off the books. And so it's very hard to even track and be aware of. And it relates to how the center is dealing with and forcing a lot of these local governments to take on unfunded mandates. And their main source of revenue previously was from the real estate market. And so if they haven't had access to revenues coming from the sales of real estate, they have to look for other sources. It's a big concern, enough for Xi Jinping to be sending down policy enforcement teams, which you would think after all this time in office, he wouldn't have to do anymore. But it shows the concern that they have with local officials and their willingness to actually follow mandates coming from Beijing. And then to top that, you have weakness in the local banks, which again are lending to the local governments and to the local real estate market. Top that with youth unemployment, for many in China, this is the source of their retirement plan, the fact that their children are going to be working and supporting the parents and the grandparents. And the numbers are over 20 percent. The unofficial numbers are believed to be significantly higher than that. And it creates a real lack of confidence domestically in China and in Xi Jinping's economic policies. Top this with the fact that there's a slowing global economy, meaning that China's export opportunities continue to be hit and they're down 15 percent, and changing geopolitics, making it more complicated for companies to be doing business in China. And Xi Jinping really has some rough waters ahead. Uh, is President Xi at this point solving this problem for the economics of it? Or is he solving it for the ideology of it? Because some of his rhetoric has indicated he actually may mm -hmm. care more about the party and the party rigor in, in the private sector than he cares about the economics of it. Well, that's an excellent question. He certainly has been very focused on using the party as the means to govern, whether it's through the government itself, whether it's through the military, whether it's through the judiciary, it's the party that's supreme. And he has tried to create an ide ideology and a unity through that. We see in the new structuring of the government that it's all the party committees who are actually setting economic policy and the government more and more is just an implementer. So as we see these difficulties in the government, these weaknesses in the ability to create jobs for the youth, in the challenges in attract uh, attracting direct foreign investment, or venture capital or private equity, the big question will be whether Xi Jinping pivots and focuses more on market opening and creating the confidence and the conditions to continue to attract foreign business, which is necessary if he's going to continue to grow his economy. He can't do it without foreign business being present. We've seen him pivot before. We saw how quickly he was willing to pivot at the end of COVID in opening up to the rest of the world, and we're starting to see signs that he's beginning to reconsider some of his economic policies to be more open and change that emphasis from such a focus on the party, not that it's ever going to go away, but to really be focused more on providing opportunities. Look at what he's been doing in technology and the opportunities now in encouraging platform companies and the tech executives to be innovative where it wasn't that long ago when they were one of the top targets. President Xi may decide that he wants to be more open to the rest of the world. Is the rest of the world open to President Xi at this point? Certainly the United States and the West 
seems to be taking some actions, including this week with restrictions on outbound investment mm -hmm. into China. We see various actions being taken. To what extent does that hamper what President Xi can do? As you know so well, Deborah, foreign direct investment is down rather substantially into China. It is. And I think one of the biggest questions is around confidence, confidence in China and its leadership. Obviously, the United States has to stay very focused on its national security, and these outbound investment regulations are limited to areas that it's concerned that we might be creating competitors to our own national security interests. The, I think it's going to be important to watch if other countries do the same. There definitely is a reconsideration in Western economies and looking at what their relationship is economically with China. It's not to say that companies aren't investing there and continuing to do business there, but more and more we hear they're looking at China for China and then they're looking at the rest of the world. Some of China's own policies, including its national security law, are really emphasizing that fact because it's a very murky area, particularly when it comes to issues like data, and more and more companies are looking at how they can create an island in China for data and not have it linked into the rest of the world. And those issues, even though they may sound small right now, start to have a ripple effect in how CEOs and others are making their investment decisions. And this is one of the reasons. It's not just these geopolitical uh, restrictions that we're seeing that are limiting direct foreign investment in China. It's some of China's own policies that are, are causing a concern within, I think, the foreign business community.